All right. Today, the review embargo has finally dropped for people to start talking about Sonic Frontiers, and first up is IGN, the IGN reviewer who originally played the game back at the beginning of June, who gave us all that beautiful gameplay, has finally come out to answer our questions about cyberspace and the open world and everything in regards to Sonic Frontiers. And he has some cool stuff to say, but most of it, I'm not gonna lie, is kinda disappointing. Now, if you're new here, make sure to like, subscribe, and hit that bell for post notifications on if you want to be notified of my future videos. Anyways, let's get into analyzing this Q&A. So first things first, he kind of summarized his experience with these cyberspace levels and what the levels looked like. So uh, let's hear what he has to say real quick. Uh, I got to play four levels. Uh, you see two of them in that Nintendo Direct trailer. One of them is modeled after Green Hill Zone, and that's actually the very first thing that you get to play when you when you jump into Sonic Frontiers. There's an opening cutscene, and then you get thrown into Cyber World, and you do that uh, Green Hill Zone, basically. Um, the second one is the Highway Zone that you see, which is probably like my, my favorite one that I got to play. That one was just awesome. Uh, there was one that was modeled after Chemical Plant Zone, and then there was one that was kind of like a Sky Temple. I don't really remember if it was based off of any prior Sonic games. It might have, but my you know it's been a little while since I've played some of the older 3D Sonic games. Yeah, so uh, Green Hill Zone is returning, Chemical Plant is returning, and Sky Sanctuary is returning. Let me guess, Speed Highway, City Escape, maybe a Crisis City? I don't know, we're probably gonna get all the Generations levels at this point. So this is my defense as to why this is not a good thing for Sonic Frontiers, and I know that some people were dead set on defending these levels returning, but just hear me out for a moment. I remember when the Nintendo Direct first aired and everyone was so quick to say, it's just Green Hill Zone, it's not a big deal, it's not a big deal in the slightest. Even though as a community we've been complaining about Green Hill returning and uh, Lost World forces and mania for the past couple years, but now that it's in Nintendo Direct and now that's in Frontiers, it's not a big deal, I get it. And you know what, I'll actually give you the benefit of doubt. Maybe it's not really a big deal, just one level, Green Hill Zone, not a big deal, it's just one level, right? It's not just one level. Chemical Plant is returning and Sky Sanctuary is returning, and my guess is that plenty of other old levels are going to be returning in this game as well. At that point, this game is already reusing more of Sonic's history than Sonic Forces, which that game was already heavily criticized for reusing Sonic's history. But you know what? Still, it's just a level aesthetic. I really do not like this because I like getting new levels in my Sonic games, but at the end of the day, it looks like the majority of the levels are going to be reused from Sonic Generations, and that is just unfortunate. Level aesthetics do matter, they shape the atmosphere of the game you're playing. But you know what? The game may reuse a lot of stuff from Sonic Generations, but that's okay, because all I care about anymore is if these levels are going to have good level design or not. If the level design is good, I might have some fun with the cyberspace stages, but if the level design is forces quality, then yeah, I'm going to ignore cyberspace in this game. I never thought I would get to the point where I say the open world looks infinitely better than the cyberspace levels, but you know what? Like I said last video, that's the roller coaster of Sonic Frontiers. Anyways, let's move on to what he has to say about the level length. To me, they felt a bit short, and I say that because I, I believe I beat most, if not all of them, within two minutes, even on like my first try. Okay, so uh, the levels are short, and that is a little concerning, but that doesn't mean the levels are bad. If it's designed well, it can still be fun. I mean, one of my favorite Sonic games is Sonic Colors, and I felt like the 3D sections and the 2D sections in that game was pretty well designed. So if these short levels are designed like Sonic Colors, I might be able to have a blast with these cyberspace levels. But if they're designed like Forces, then that's gonna be a different situation. However, he does go into a bit more detail about how the levels are designed, so let's hear it. The, the levels in Sonic Frontiers felt pretty focused on one or two things. You would start off, it would be a boost focus section, then you'd go onto a rail, and then you'd go onto like a, you know, a little platforming bit until you're back into a boost section, and then you get to the end of the level. Um, so they, they felt shorter, but I don't really mean that in a negative way. I think they were actually just long enough where I wanted to keep on retrying them so I can get those, those goals. I mentioned this also in my preview, 
every level has five goals, and every time you achieve a goal, you get a, uh, a vault key, which allows you to unlock the Chaos Emeralds. So how I interpreted what he was saying is that some levels are going to be completely focused on 3D, and some levels will be focused on 2D. And that doesn't sound too bad, actually, because me personally, I don't really have an issue with 2D sections being in modern Sonic games. I think they're a little bit overhated, and honestly, I think they make the levels a lot more fun. I have no problem with 2D sections in modern Sonic games, just as long as they're designed well. So how I see this situation is that the level design could either be Sonic Colors quality or Sonic Forces quality. And I'm hoping that we get Sonic Colors quality because I think Sonic Colors level design is perfectly fine. I actually like the Sonic Colors level design a lot, and I've gone into great detail as to why in previous videos. Something that keeps me optimistic that these levels will be more designed like Sonic Colors and less designed like Sonic Forces is that at the end of this question, he mentioned how the levels, despite being short, were actually pretty fun, and he really wanted to replay them so he could get better times. That sounds a lot like Sonic Colors, because the levels in Sonic Colors were very short, but they were designed well enough to make you want to keep replaying them. And if that's how the cyberspace levels are designed in Sonic Frontiers, then yeah, I'd consider that a W. That would be a win for this game. But... I will keep my skepticism, and I'm not going to assume that this game will be great, and I'm not going to assume that this game will be bad. I'm just gonna stay skeptical, and wait to see how this game turns out. Alright, so the final thing we need to talk about in cyberspace was this last question he answered about it, basically asking if it was similar to Generations, Unleashed, or Forces and Colors. And this is what he had to say. Uh, you know, I guess it's it's more similar to Unleashed and Generations because of the fact that there's no, there's no wisps. <laughs> there's no wisps. Wisps is still a very hard word for me to say. It's just kind of purely focused on that modern, boost-focused 3D Sonic experience. So, I saw some people getting very excited over this answer, saying stuff like, Hey, we got the Unleashed in Generations level design back, it is finally back, we got good boost levels, pop the champagne. We might not be out of the woods yet, and I mean this with all due respect for the reviewer who answered these questions about the game, but he doesn't seem to know what he's talking about. And I'm thinking this because he answered the question by saying, it's like Generations in Unleashed because he didn't see any Wisps. And that just didn't really make sense to me. Wisps were only in Sonic Colors. And in Sonic Forces, they were a part of the Avatar, but for the main boosting levels, there was no Wisps like that. There was Yakker, which, you know, gave you the boosting ability, but you didn't have Cube, you didn't have any of that. So that tells me that he doesn't know the difference between the level design of Sonic Colors and Forces and Generations and Unleashed. Which, I don't really blame him because he seems like the average Joe just playing some games, giving some reviews. He probably doesn't care about the level design as much as we do as Sonic fans, and I understand that. But that was entirely me assuming on my part, maybe he does know what he's talking about, and maybe just worded it a little bit weird. We don't know. I am hoping these levels are Sonic Generations and Unleashed quality, but I also wouldn't mind some Sonic Colors quality. Just do not design these levels like Sonic Forces. So the next question is whether or not this game has momentum, and here's what he has to say. I honestly didn't really think about it. Uh... Sonic's control felt fine to me. At the very least, it wasn't noticeably different from other boost-centric Sonic games, especially in the cyberspace levels. It's true that it doesn't really matter what speed Sonic hits a rail at, he'll still grind it all the same, but I also don't necessarily think that's a bad thing. Yeah, I already knew this was gonna be the case. I already knew that Sonic Frontiers was not going to have any momentum, and... To be quite honest, I am very disappointed by that because I wanted an open world Sonic game that was momentum based, but you know what? That's fine. It doesn't mean the game is gonna be bad. The game can be just as good without momentum. Even though I really wanted momentum, I'm not going to throw a crybaby tantrum over this because like I said in previous videos, the adventure era is long gone. We're in the new era, this is how Sonic is made now, momentum is a thing of the past that might be brought back in the future, but I'm not gonna keep my hopes up. So, the way it works is that when you hom homing attack onto something, you'll do the, the little punch kick combo, 
and then on the last hit you'll kind of kick yourself away and you'll come back down to the ground. There are a couple of upgrades that you can get in the skill tree that add some sort of new attack to the end of that string. So that's where you see like this move and then this move. I think, and this is one of those things where, like, don't quote me on this, because again, I played this a month and a half ago, but I think that there is a combo counter, I think you get rewarded with, like, a certain kind of power-up mode if you do um, a bunch of hits without getting hit, so there is a reward for being careful. Um, that's generally how combat works, it's not, you know, it's not, <laughs> this isn't Devil May Cry. I think the real test for the combat of this game will be enemy variety. So, I cut up that question a bit because he does ramble on about stuff we already know, but the main important stuff is that the combat is button mashy, and I know that some people do not like button mashy combat, but I see it as kind of necessary for Sonic. Sonic is supposed to be this simple game that is very simple and easy to pick up and play, so I don't really want a super complex combat system, and just like the reviewer said here, I think the biggest challenge for Sonic Team is going to be enemy variety, because I'm gonna be honest with you, judging from Sonic Team's past, they've always had an issue with their combat systems. Every combat system that has been introduced in every Sonic game has fallen short in one way or another. For example, Sonic Heroes had a very simple combat system, but it was also slippery and the enemy variety was very repetitive. With Sonic 06, they had you homing attack the same enemy multiple times until it died, which is simple and does get the job done and it's not too bad, but it's also kind of weird and boring. Then you had Sonic Unleashed, which had a very complex combat system, but it was still simple to the point where anyone could pick it up and have fun. But the problems with Sonic Unleashed was that the enemy variety was very repetitive. You would find the same enemies over and over and again, and also the levels were too long. Right here in Sonic Frontiers, this looks like the best combat system we have ever had in a Sonic game. But that all depends on the enemy variety. If we fight the same enemies throughout the entire game, we're gonna have another Sonic Hero situation where it's just the same thing over and over again and it gets repetitive and then it's no longer fun. So in that case, Sonic Frontiers really needs to focus on its enemy variety. And honestly, that was an issue with Breath of the Wild as well. One of the only critiques I have for Breath of the Wild was that the enemy variety was kind of lame, it was the same enemies all around Hyrule, and it was a little bit boring in that aspect. Maybe Sonic Frontiers can actually one-up Breath of the Wild on that aspect, that would be pretty cool. As of right now, where I stand is that the combat system looks really good, but it all depends on enemy variety, so I'll be looking forward to seeing how the enemy variety is handled when I finally get my hands on this game. The next question is someone asking what the rock creatures are from the original Sonic Frontiers trailers. This is what he has to say. So collecting those little rock guys, it's kind of like Korok seeds in Breath of the Wild, where like you solve a really simple puzzle, you find a Korok seed, you do the kind of the same thing in Sonic Frontiers. And what they do is that somewhere in on the island is like this elder rock guy. And if you get enough Little Rock Guys, I, I, I wish I could remember the name for them right now, I, I'm sorry, again, a month and a half ago. Um, if you get enough of those Little Rock Guys and you, and you bring them back to the Elder, he will either upgrade your speed or upgrade your maximum rings that you can carry. So yeah, that was definitely ripped out of Breath of the Wild, but you know what, that's okay. I like the idea of Sonic being able to upgrade his abilities, so I'm actually fine with these Korok Seed guys being around the open world. Although, I kinda wish that they were NPCs in a village instead. Like, when you look at this, you think of Breath of the Wild, and it's not a big deal in the slightest. This is very much a minor nitpick of mine, but I much would have rather had a village with some NPCs that you could trade collectibles in for Sonic's new abilities. Except, it looks like they're gonna be going with these Korok seed looking guys, and that's fine. I just know that the Breath of the Wild comparisons are gonna go crazy because of this. Alright, I kinda just wanted to include this little part of the Q&A because I thought it sounded cool, so uh, here it is. If you're able to collect 400 rings, I believe the cutoff is 400 rings, you're able to activate this like super blue boost that like, you know, envelops Sonic in like this awesome blue aura, he's able to go even faster on his boosts, and he just, he goes extremely fast. If you thought that Sonic Frontiers isn't fast enough, just... Trust me, it's once you get this blue boost, 
he moves plenty fast. So yeah, you actually get rewarded for collecting rings. When you get 400 rings, you get this blue boost and that sounds awesome. And I'm gonna imagine having so much fun with that in the open world. Now let's get into the final question where someone asks if Sonic Frontiers is going to be open, sort of like Breath of the Wild, or if it's going to have a strict story path similar to Red Dead Redemption or other Rockstar games. This is what he had to say. No, you're pretty much able to go wherever you want when you first land on Starfall Island. Um, you know, obviously there is a main quest that you are constantly reminded of, um, but you know, you're able to just go off in a direction. There's a bunch of puzzles to solve to open up your map. The map will, will tell you where Chaos Emeralds are. You'll be able to find more puzzles to open up more of the map. So there's actually a lot to do in the open zone. There's a bunch of collectibles to find, the aforementioned uh, rock guys that you can you can grab. Uh, it doesn't really funnel you towards a, a certain path. You're kind of free to take on that critical path whenever you want. This is probably the best thing I've heard about Sonic Frontiers so far, because from what this reviewer is saying, it appears that Sonic Frontiers is going to be open just like Breath of the Wild, where once you jump into the map, you can go anywhere and tackle any objective you want in any order. Which basically means that we can craft our own experiences in the open world and play the game our way instead of following a strict linear path. I love this. We're going to be able to craft our own experiences and I can already tell that this game is going to have some great speedrunning potential. This was actually one of the things I was really afraid of when it came to Sonic Frontiers. I felt like there would be some way for Sega to find a way to make Sonic Frontiers linear despite it being open world, but as we can see right here, it doesn't appear to be linear. You can tackle anything in any order, and I love that. The rest of the questions were pretty basic. It was things like, is the music good? Which, yes, it does appear that the music is gonna be good. Shocker, guys, a Sonic game has good music, but also there is no spin dash, but there is a drop dash, which is very interesting. But other than that, those are the questions. I recommend you guys check out the Q&A for yourself so you can form your own thoughts, but let's get into the final verdict of today's video. The more I learn about Sonic Frontiers, the more excited I am to play the open world aspect of this game. And I'll be 100% honest with you guys, I'm not too excited for cyberspace. I think cyberspace looks kind of boring. It sounds kind of lame according to this reviewer. I do have some optimism that it will be more like Sonic Colors and less like Sonic Forces, but I'm not going to keep my hopes up. What I'm really excited for when it comes to this game is the open world, and from the sounds of it, it sounds like the open world will be the majority of the game. So, I might like the majority of this game, which that is definitely a good thing, because I want a good Sonic game. Like sure, I had my fun with Sonic Origins, despite others not really liking the game collection, but I want something new. A new Sonic game, a new 3D Sonic game for me to play. This open world sounds awesome. I'm just not too happy about cyberspace. But with that said, that's all I gotta say about Sonic Frontiers. I hope you guys liked this analysis. If you liked the video, make sure to like, comment, and favorite, and subscribe. Hit that bell for post notifications on if you want to be notified of my future videos. Anyways, I will see you soon, guys. Love you guys. Adios. My channel members are Boys Go, Orion Pax, Snix, Ethan K78, Johnny Unrings, Epic Game Mode, George, Slank Man, 715, Storm, Archer XYZ, Sonic Club, Thomas One Rai, Chip Chap Chop, Escape Sonic Pip, The Squeaker Nerd, Subjects, Boom Sonic, Extreme, Super Saiyan Sonic. Thank you all for supporting the channel. Make sure to click one of the videos in the end card. Love you guys. Peace out.